Hi, I'm Dr. Gwen. I'm a clinical psychologist who's been empowering disabled individuals, their families, and their support systems for over 20 years. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel where I curate tools, share mindsets, and promote habits to help neurodiverse individuals thrive. Also, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. In this video, I interview Lisa Berman, Director of Marketing and Community Outreach at the Glenholm School in Connecticut. The Glenholm School is a therapeutic day and residential program that supports students between the ages of 10 to 21. With their positive behavior support model and kindness, respect, and fairness as pillars of their program, the Glenholm School is perfect for students with learning differences who also struggle with anxiety and depression. Between their rich extracurricular program and their Center for the Arts, the Glenholm School provides a robust education for students who have not felt like they belong at other schools. I hope you enjoy this interview with Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good. So I can't wait to get into finding out more about the Glenholm School, but maybe what we can do first is um, you telling us about yourself. Sure. Um, so my name is Lisa Berman, and um, I am the Director of Marketing and Community Outreach at the Glen Home School. Uh, and I started writing when I was a teenager, uh, went into social work, went back into advertising, and now find myself here. And it's a wonderful, wonderful position of both advertising, writing, and, and social work all together. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. Okay, and so tell us about the Glenholm School. Sure, um, so the Glenholm School is a residential and day school, uh, a therapeutic boarding school in Washington, Connecticut. It is uh, for its co-ed school for students 10 to 21 years old. And the students have average to above average intelligence, um, have learning differences, and usually accompanied by comorbid diagnoses such as high functioning autism um, or mood disorders such as depression, anxiety, bipolar uh, disorder, Tourette's, OCD. Many of the students have school refusal or have been bullied and our students, it's very interesting because many of them come after being in many different special needs school programs. And many of the students come straight from a mainstream program. Something happens and they're just unable to cope in their current setting. So uh, we're able to kind of handle all different sorts of, of students. Yeah, and Lisa, when you say therapeutic, mm -hmm. I think it's so important for us to define what that means. So can you get into why you guys consider yourselves um, a therapeutic day program? So um, day and residential both. And residential, right. Um, so the thing is about the school that given that we have many different types of students, we have all sorts of different therapeutic approaches. Every student has a clinician, uh, a social worker that they will see at least once a week but our school's also very much in the, in the moment. So what I mean by that is we also have a behavioral program. We have a token economy that students participate in. And there are behaviors for each student, a behavior plan developed for each student based on what their needs are. On top of that, we also have um, movement therapies such as yoga and dance. We have a tremendous arts program that helps bring students out of themselves a little bit, um, helps them introspect from a character's point of view. Um, we have music. So we kind of have like therapy all the time. You know, we have all sorts of different programs to help students practice social skills. We have a commons, which is our community, our restaurant where students get to work on executive functions through the setup of this restaurant that the students can work in. We have equine therapy. So we have four horses on campus and students can help take care of the horses as well as ride. Um, mm -hmm. So there's all 
sorts of different ways that we get to kind of interact with our students to help them progress. Yeah. And, you know, this kind of idea of, um, you know, you were talking about average to above average ability mm -hmm. with some learning differences with these comorbidities, yeah. right, of high functioning autism or other mood disorders, Tourette's, et cetera, that the therapeutic um, services are so important because managing our emotions has a lot to do with our social skills and our learning mm -hmm. and and all of that so lots of different options here for how to tap into yourself how to understand yourself mm -hmm. how to express yourself that's so lovely and you were saying you're both residential and day school so some of your some of your students um, live on live on campus yes. and some don't correct correct got it Got it. Do you find that you have um, students that come out of state? Oh, yes. Um, we have, so we're in Connecticut, probably about 30% of our students are from Connecticut. Um, we have many students from New York, but we also have quite a few students from California, mm -hmm. um, from Illinois, from Washington, D.C., from Texas, from really all over the country. And we have international students as well. That's so, awesome. And, and then so 10 to 21 um, is the age range that you serve. Um, and then now, Lisa, is there, you know, with some programs, there's phases or steps. I mean, especially mm -hmm. as, as uh, students become older, like how does your program shift, um, especially kind of over 18? How, oh, how does your program look with, you know, your older students? So um, that's a great question. Um, we have a second program. We have two programs. We have the Glen Home School, and then we have the E3 Transitions Program. And that's set up specifically for students who are from 18 to 21. And that program is the students have mostly finished high school. Uh, they live in a separate uh, campus. And they have a hub in a, a city, a nearby city. And students there do internships. They might be taking a class in college. Um, they might have a job. They're learning other things that'll help prepare them for independent life. In terms of phases for the school, when a, a student comes to the school, we have a token economy. Mm -hmm. So they'll start out in a phase three. And as they manage to um, do well and, and be able to meet the goals that are set by them with their therapists and their behavioral therapists, they'll move into phase two, phase one. And then we get to self-supported management, which is the highest phases. Each uh, phase gives a student more privileges. You were asking, as they get older and they get more um, higher on the program, they'll get their own apartments in the school. When they have their own apartment, what that looks like is they're kind of reliant on themselves to get themselves up in the morning, to get themselves to breakfast and to school. And it's a sort of way of uh, helping them prepare for their next steps, whether it's going off to college or independent life. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how the program helps them move through the different phases. Nice. So kind of this progression from school, um, where obviously for your younger students, you know, it's school-based, and then really with this focus on um, launching uh, to yes. independence, as much as, as much independence as they can anyway have. Right. And what is the staff ratios? What do the staff ratios look like, Lisa? Um, especially as as your students are aging into their adulthood. Um, so um, we have eighty students on campus. We have one hundred and twenty eight staff members. Now that includes that includes support staff. I don't mean direct support staff, but it includes maintenance and all that. Um, mm -hmm. The cottages are typically eight to 10 students with two staff. And overnight, there's one awake staff. The classrooms are eight to 10 students mm -hmm. with one teacher 
and one teacher's assistant. And then in the transition program, we have um, up to 15 students in the program. And usually there's two staff. Um, one of the staff very often is, is helping move the, the students. I mean, we have a base in the city where the students can take buses and get around, but then their home is in a sub more suburban area or actually a rural area. So they need someone to help drive them around. Um, so it's it. two to 15. Two to 15, yeah. got it, got it, wow, yeah. It's so funny with so many programs that I learn about, the staff outnumbers the students yeah. um, because of just making sure the wraparound support, you know, right. is there and making sure everyone's covered and supported adequately. Lisa, how do you guys handle medication, um, you know, with your with your students? Uh, and, and I'm especially interested in kind of your older students as well. But how, how do you guys handle, you know, medication management at Glenholm? So that is one thing that um, we we have two psychiatrists, consulting psychiatrists who are on staff. Um, well, they're consultants. And they um, work with the students in terms of prescribing medication. Um, and then we have a nursing staff that handles the school students. And at the transition level, staff will assist the students in terms of make, make, making sure their medications are um, being adhered to their management. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So there is this kind of um, support, though, for medication management. Yes. Yes, throughout. Yes, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Fantastic. That's great. And, you know, we were just talking about, you know, the kind of the, the, what kinds of students you get at Glen Holm uh, that are most common. What would you say is, you know, your kind of in the pocket student, you know, the student that comes to you and you're like, wow, when, when they come to us and I know what Glen Holm provides mm -hmm. this, lots of great things happen. Like what kind of student would that be? So a lot of our students typically are going to be students who are more fragile. Mm -hmm. Again, I had mentioned earlier students who might've been bullied or who are anxious. Um, students like that tend to really kind of flourish at our school. Some of our students may come in with previous histories of anxiety, frustration. Um, and our program really helps shore them up, helps reinforce or teach them more social skills. Um, there's a lot of positive behavior interventions. So a lot of very specific um, pointing out behaviors that they're doing very well at and helping them with that. So that's what we see a lot of times. Kids will come in a little bit nervous, you know, being at a place where they may have been singled out for some of their quirkiness. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that really doesn't happen at Glen Home because we have a very positive atmosphere and it's, you know, the core pillars of our program are kindness, respect, responsibility, honestness, and fairness. But kindness really is the number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's this place where, you know, we, I, I talk about this a lot um, and this pops up in other interviews, which is just, you know, school is a place to learn, right? Mm -hmm. It's a place to build skills and learn and prepare for the life ahead of me. Right. But that learning is risky. You know, learning is a risky endeavor. And so if you've been bullied or you're anxious or you're nervous, right? you need to have an environment where you feel safe mm -hmm. and you feel like you're not going to be bullied and you feel like you can be yourself, you know, and let go. You know, if we can't establish that feeling of safety through kindness, through respect, through positivity, then not a lot of learning is right. really going to happen, right. you know? Right. And so... Um, it's so great. Like that is your, your first and foremost thing, which is mm -hmm. let's create this safe space for students that may have not felt like they belonged anywhere else to come and feel a sense of belonging. Right. Absolutely. 
Yeah, great. That's so great. You know, um, Lisa, what do you hope your students leave Glen home with? You know, if, if we could if we could kind of have that picture of what a graduate of Glen Home looks like, you know, what are your hopes for your students as they leave your program? So clearly what we're hoping is that they're ready to take their next step and that they've incorporated the skills and um, feeling more positive and confident about themselves. Some of our students will go to um, other transition programs besides us may go to um, supported educational programs or may go to education, you know, one of his supported education programs, colleges, but with supportive services um, or take some classes, you know, gradually going into school. Um, I guess that's what I hope. We, we do a program also that's sort of a, a program to help students identify what they'd like to do. It's called the MAPS program. And, and that also helps students get a better sense of what their interests are, their passions, their strengths, so they can move in that direction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so really helping to dial in, you know, what the student desires for their life. That's right, that's right. Um, do a lot of your students um, after they're 21 or you know, after they've turned 21, do they tend to stay um, by the school? I mean, are there other programs that they might transition to around you? Not in our area. We're in a rural area, so there really are not a lot of other programs right nearby. No. Got it. Got it. So how do you guys help them transition to another program? Let's say if they're going to another transition program after you, um, what do you guys do to prepare or facilitate that transition? So we have a college and career coach who will help them, uh, whether it's applying to a school and finding the supportive housing or coaching programs that they need, uh, we'll do that. Um, or working with the families mm -hmm. and the Board of Ed if it's a matter of transitioning them to another program. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes like I know my clients, they need some kind of support for their entire life, you know, and, and that might decrease over time. But the reality is there are some support that's needed somewhere, whether it's with money management or transportation or, you know, these things. So um, so that that's great to know. So you're in a rural area uh, that, you know, you were saying it must be gorgeous. Uh, you know, the, and expansive. I know you, I mean, if you've got equine therapy, you've got lots yes. of nice, beautiful outdoor things to do. So that sounds lovely. So the school itself is on a 110 acre estate that was given to the Devereaux Foundation in um, 1962. And it's, it's really beautiful. It's very uplifting for the students to be there. Um, and we have the opportunity, aside from equine therapy, there's four competitive sports that students participate in. There's tennis, soccer, uh, softball, and basketball. And they participate with other schools, schools mm -hmm. like ours, or they'll, or they'll play against maybe the junior varsity team of another school, you know, Got our it. older kids. <clears throat> and on the yeah. grounds, we have Frisbee golf. We have a ropes course. Um, the, the students get, can hike on the grounds. It's, it's really very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's so nice cause it's, it's amazing what environment can do, you know, being in Southern mm -hmm. California, we're pretty landlocked over here. So it's hard to get that kind of expansive space, um, to be outdoors and, and to enjoy all those outdoors. So you have a strong athletic department or, uh, yeah. piece to, to Glen Holm. We do. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's incredible, um, and that they can be competitive, which is also fantastic. That's great. So, um, Lisa, how do you or how do people typically pay for Glen Holm? So the school is um, students are funded by a mix of public and private. Um, many students are uh, funded by their school districts. Mm -hmm. um, we are on the approved lists 
for many states. So they will pay for it. Um, and then parents, families will also pay. And the pricing is very competitive with other schools, um, you know, residential programs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. So it is this mix of public, private, and with, with many of your students going there with um, district funding. Correct. Even out Correct. of state, which is great. Yes. And it yes. sounds like you can help navigate that if... Absolutely. If that, if Absolutely. That's an option. Right. That's awesome. Okay. Well, Lisa, I love to ask this question of all my interviewees, which is, you know, if you could only choose one skill to mm -hmm. empower an individual with, what would it be and why? So uh, if I could only empower one, one skill, I would absolutely say it, it would be best to be some kind of social skills. Um, or social skill. I don't know if that's one power or not, or if that's many, but yeah, yeah. clearly to be able to navigate, like there's many students who get an education, but still find it very challenging to navigate the world because of a, a terrible shyness or anxiety, mm -hmm. as opposed to being able to, to have more of that social maneuverability where they can go and, and interview with somebody and, you know, make their acquaintance and, and be able to do that without terrible angst. Yes. So I think that's something that I would wish for all of yeah. our students. Yeah, that kind of feeling comfortable in your own skin. That's right. That confidence to be able to inter to interact and have meaningful relationships. No, that's so great. And you know, no matter who my client is and how impacted they may be, I always, they always desire to be, to have relationships with people, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so social skills is so critical. I love that you brought that up, you know, on top of education and how social skills are different. It's a different curriculum than education um, yeah. that we think of anyway, classically with education or academia. So that's great. Well, Lisa, how, what's the best way for people, if they're listening to this interview, uh, to find out more about the Glenn Home School or to reach out to you? Sure. So um, what I would recommend is that they take a look at our website, which is theglennhomeschool.org. Or they can reach out to our admissions department. Um, should I give you the phone number? Yeah, it was, sure. I mean, and I It'll can always put it in the website. description. It'll be on our website as well. Yes. Um, but the phone number is 860-868-7377 and ask for our admissions department and we can help you with anything additional um, if you're interested in learning more about the school or if you have a, a student that might be appropriate for us. That's great. Okay, that's great to know. Um, during the time of COVID, mm. are you guys accepting students right now? We are. Okay. We are. Great. Um, we, we have been open um, and we have been teaching students through a, a blending, a hybrid version. Uh, of course, in March, when there was a lockdown, many students went home and many couldn't because they lived out of state and couldn't travel or lived out of the country. Mm -hmm. So we have been doing a hybrid version um, at this point, all of our students are back on campus, but we are accepting students with precautions. Uh, so they'll be tested before they come in, um, and then they'll test and, and quarantine either on the grounds or outside with a family member. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, we are accepting students. That's great. That's so good to know. I know that um, that's been tough for some families because mm -hmm. of this time. So, well, thank you, Lisa, for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in finding out more about the Glen Home School, their information is in the description below. I've also provided a link to my website where I provide additional insights and impressions of this interview. If you got any value from this interview, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Doing so helps to get this information to others just like you. If there's a topic or a program that you want to know more about, please leave it in the comments below.
See you in the next video and thanks for watching.